On this episode, I talk about selling merchandise, how to price sponsorship of your show, and Tim Ferriss stops by. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. People are mourning for the beard. Uh, sure. Sorry, guys. I, I, you know what? I like it. I, I think I look very fresh. The other thing, the other thing that I like is. Through that whole beard experiment, I realized that you can keep your facial hair at the same exact size all the time if you want to. So I think I'm gonna buy a trimmer, and I, 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 this is two days. I think it's like five or six days that I like the length, uh, and I may have a permanent five o'clock shadow for it, like. Rose yeah, exactly. He rocks it. Yeah. It's so funny. I don't know why I didn't recognize that you're able to do that. <laughs> I literally just thought people's facial hair just stopped and mine just kept going. <laughs> and others just kept going, but like, it was, it's really like a very basic thing that I just didn't understand happened in the world. Yeah, anyway, that's quite sad. 91? Hey everybody, this is Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, and you're watching episode 91 of the Ask Gary V Show. You may also be listening to it. A little rusty from not doing a show for six or seven days, so I said watched instead of this is. 91, a tremendous number. A uh, number of my favorite New York Jack, Sheldon Richardson. Uh, the NFL Draft is on Thursday. I'm, I'm, I'm filming, recording this on a Tuesday, so if you're watching it right now or tonight or tomorrow, uh, I want you to know that I am going to Chicago for the NFL Draft, and I fully intend to uh, be the face of the New York Jets pick, because I don't expect as many Jet fans in Chicago as normally in New York. I will be cozying up to the cameramen, both on the NFL Network and ESPN.com, and I'm very confident that the Jets will select XYZ player, they will pan to fans, and it will be me and AJ saying yay or boo. So I'm excited for that, look for that. Let's get in to the show, India. Aaron asks. Actually, before we get into the show, I missed not doing the show for six or seven days. Miss everybody. Big ups to everyone on Meerkat. Uh, and now, India, let's get into the show. Aaron asks. Wait, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, go ahead. Aaron asks, everyone visiting my site will be there for custom music. Should I delay them with content? Aaron, this is a very interesting question for a very specific reason. If you were watching on Meerkat, I kind of had to talk to India four or five times on this question. I didn't really fully get it. And then I realized, aha, that's why I don't get it. Because of the way you position the question, my friend. If you notice the sentence structure, something I never understood because I have no grammar skills, you say delay them with content. That in itself is the problem. It's the energy that you approach this question with, which is that you're saying to yourself, do I put out content that is in my best interest instead of theirs, hence the word delay, and the way I always talk about it is putting out content that actually brings value to people. And so when I say a pop-up, you know, when I say don't stop them from going to what they want to, that's a pop-up ad that's not bringing them any value. If you put out content that isn't the music, but maybe is the behind the scenes of you remixing the music, getting the music, your thoughts on the music, if you bring them other value, well then you're bringing value. I mean, people watch a show to get to the answers. Do they enjoy the banter that I have before when me and India make that, we get into the show or my Jets thing or whatever? You know, I think there's a certain subset that does enjoy that um, and that's why I've been able to pull off video show after video show because I'm trying to make it interesting with other things besides the hardcore content. Uh, some people think that's too much, they don't like it and then they won't be there but at the end of the day, the fact that you say delay them with content means that the energy and the seed of how you're approaching it is wrong what you need to do is make that value added content. Make that part of the overall experience. Make that the reason they come. And I think, you know, I think that that is something that people really misunderstand. I think the Mets have a much better stadium than the Yankees because of all the added venues and the nuances and the ambiance of their stadium. I'm there for the ball game, people are there for the ball game, but there's always added value of why you're there. Uh, it may be a dartboard in a bar, is the dartboard there to stop them from drinking another beer? No, it adds. So let's add, Vayner Nation, let's not subtract. It's interesting the way he asked it. Yeah, it is. It's like he's already against it. He's already against it. It's already not for them. It needs to be for them. Zach! 
Hey Gary, Christoph here with ScaleYourCode.com. How would you price sponsorships for an episode of a show like Ask Gary V? Would you go by the number of views, by the number of sales they get? What do you think? Thanks, Gary. Yes, I think that there is a very simple answer to this. My big belief when you're selling sponsorship to something new is you ask for as much as possible. I'm not kidding. You don't know what your ceiling is. If you go by CPMs and views, um, you're really in a tough spot because views and, and impressions have been commoditized to such a level that you'll never hit enough scale. Most people are gonna make $4 on their show sponsorship if they go that route. It's the association. Notice I don't run ads or sell sponsorship on this show and if I did, I would expect substantial bank because not only, it's not about the 20, 30, 40, 50,000 YouTube and 50, 60, 70, 80,000 Facebook impressions and awareness and all that nature. It's about the brand association. You know, I'm endorsing it by accepting it because. I've never done it before. And so there's an extra value on that. And so I think the thing that you really need to think about is is if it's a small business startup, you need to negotiate. There needs to be just a price and you start high. If it's a media buying agency, you're already in trouble because they're looking to buy scale and they're really looking to commoditize your traffic and that is not gonna make sense for 99.9% of the people listening and watching this show. And so my advice is to uh, price it. And then, and then the second part of your question about the conversion of sales, you don't wanna be in direct response conversion based business either. What you wanna be is in the brand association pricing, right? You know. There, you you can't put a price on a small um, business oriented solution being a sponsor of this show because they're getting to entrepreneurs and executives through this channel and there's more depth and width. And so um, I would price it as high as humanly possible and let it land to where the market actually says. I think one of the big mistakes that a lot of my friends who watch this show and a lot of people that negotiate in general, they don't uh, price accordingly because they ask for what they want and Usually you should at least double or triple what you want to leave room for the negotiation or by not, you know, a lot of times you're limiting your upside by not recognizing that you've missed or underpriced your value prop. Bunch of Deckheads wants to know, if you're selling merch, like t-shirts, how would you go about doing it? Well, Deckheads, I mean, I don't know, this is a very good question. I like this question. Um, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I would say Facebook dark posts is incredibly interesting. The targeting capabilities of what's going on in that platform are incredible. I think Pinterest and promoted pins is another place that I would spend a ton of my time and energy. And I would say traditional uh, digital, even though something I like to pick on, I think SEM, Google AdWords, and I think banner retargeting, you know, people landing on your site, you pixeling them, and uh, cooking them from the traffic that you got from the other places and then retargeting them on banner and things of that nature have all been proven t-shirt, hoodie, you know, hat selling. Uh, I, I think Facebook dark posts though are incredible. The fact that you can target people that are fans of Teespring or Busted Tees or, or, or all these kind of, you know, threadless, uh, Jack Threads, all these places where that, those kind of things are sold, Johnny Cupcakes. I mean, the fact that you can target to that level, just incredible. I mean, like, um, it, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's really a funny thing to do this show because I keep pounding this narrative and so many of you continue not to do it, but a couple of you are starting to email me saying, hey, thank you for this because this is what's happened. So that makes me happy. It makes me continue to want to spew the best advice possible and to me, 50% of my money would be allocated to Facebook dark posts with the other 50% allocated to things I just told you about. By the way, Stefan, this whole episode, I don't, you know, I, haven't, you know, I don't watch my stuff. I don't know what you guys have been doing from an editing standpoint, but even this part right now, in color when it's the show, in black and white when it's not. The part where I yelled Zach, I like that part. This right now, got it? Yeah. Our talking, got it? We've been doing it? Yeah. I, people like it, right? Uh -huh. I like it. Uh, on that note, yes. on that note, let's go right into it. Guys, Indy and I continue to want to bang out articles. If you have had success with any of the tactics from the Ask Gary V Show, here's your chance to get totally humongous exposure because we will write an article of like four businesses that have benefited from the Ask Gary V Show. And India will interview you, she'll call you, she's very sweet, she'll, you'll give her advice, you'll give her advice, excuse me, you'll give her the details, and bam, we'll blast it out there. More people, more customers, more good stuff, don't lie. Just to hack, to get in there. Truth, I want, I want, I want proof, India, because like, the Vayner Nation can get a little shady. <laughs> Edward wants to know, 
What's the biggest way right now you are hypocritical of your own advice? Edward, this is a really, really, really good question. This, Edward, this may be my favorite question. Of, you know what, Edward, you've also solved something else for me that is tremendous, which is people always ask me, what's the, you know this, Steve, what's the one question nobody ever asks you that should ask you? I think this is really it. Edward, it's a moving target. Um, uh, right now, luckily, because I've built out infrastructure a lot less, right? I'm putting out content, I'm doing a consistent show, Andy K doing a ton of Facebook dark posts. Um, we're doing a ton of influencer stuff on Instagram. I would say maybe a little bit, we need a little bit more oomph on Pinterest, but even that we're doing, huh. I would say this, in the historical uh, track of me giving advice since 2009 in business, this is easily the least hypocritical least not following my advice that I've ever been in because I finally hit scale where I can afford this incredibly good looking team. Um, show Steve for the good looking stuff. Hello there. Um, and so, <laughs> and so uh, what do you guys think actually? This could be a lot of fun. What, I'm trying to think of like what we're not crushing on that we believe in so much. We're really doing well right now. I think, I don't know. Go ahead, it's okay, you won't hurt my feelings. Okay, I think, I think that we could probably be jabbing on Wine Library better. I think that, I think that a lot of our... Well, I don't, well, by the way, let, come back to me. Yeah. I don't, I, wine Library is like out of the, like, I think, you know, for sure. Yeah. I mean, Wine Library's got Instagram that it could be doing better, Pinterest, like, in, Wine Library's got its own spiel of reorging in, in a way that I think can do better work. Wine Library, for sure. I'm talking about our world where I have a little bit more control because I'm not day-to-day -day Wine Library. What do you think is the thing, India, anything? I think SlideShare. Yeah. I'm a big, right? Slide share. Yeah. I think we've really, that's me and you. Yeah. Like, and, and maybe I could be giving a little bit more time and access to Indy and Steve for the follow up content. I'm just like grinding so hard. I mean, like, there's just like not a minute in a day. I mean, like, we're literally like talking on Sunday nights. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty intense. 6 p.m. this last Sunday. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I'm feeling really great right now about it, as good as I've ever felt. Um, Wine Library as a whole could be doing better, definitely on Instagram. There's so much upside for wine businesses there. I could be giving a little bit more access to following up on content. Um, I don't know. Could be making more episodes of the Ask Gary Vee Show. More episodes. Uh, it's, we're, we're, we're grinding pretty good right now. But I, but I want that question asked once a quarter because I think it will matter. Hey Gary, Tim Ferriss here. Cheers, top of the morning to you. And uh, I have a question because I look like Al Pacino after a bender. I am launching the Tim Ferriss Experiment and uh, it is a hell of a thing. So <laughs> how do you think television shows will be launched two years from now? Uh, both in terms of uh, distribution and in terms of promotion. That is my question because there's got to be many better ways. <laughs> Thank you. Tim, great to have you on the show. I know so many of the people in the Vayner Nation are huge fans, so that's a lot of fun. I'm sure a lot of you enjoy that. Uh, and, and, and everybody in the Vayner Nation should actually check out Tim's uh, Tim Ferriss Experiment on iTunes. Stefan, let's link that up in YouTube. Um, and I'm sure it's easy to find for all of you that are listening on the podcast. Um, and on Facebook if you're watching. Uh, I'll maybe, uh, can one of you maybe jump in with like a quick comment when this episode pops up on Facebook and link to iTunes, Tim Ferriss Experiment. Timmy, I think that um, a couple things will happen. One, I think there's gonna be a crap load more over the top services, right? So you've got Netflix, but I think you've got Vimeo starting to make some noise. I expect a lot of traditional, old school, digital leaders to get in this game. I, Microsoft's gonna have to be in this game. Yahoo's gonna have to be in this game. Um, I, I think that, there, you know, Snapchat, is clearly a television network. I think Facebook in a lot of ways goes that route. I think everybody that can own video is gonna try because all the money's there. I think launching it will happen in the way that you're doing it now, right? You're asking this question in a micro community where I'm now giving exposure to it. And so the days of going to the Today Show or running commercials on a big show or trying to get print or radio like campaigns going, there's now all these fragmented societies and, and niches, Facebook dark posts, well, you know, you know, making infographics for Pinterest, getting a ton of Instagram 
influencers, having me on my show. I'm sure you're probably hitting the podcast circuit tremendously hard. You're probably gonna show up on 15 podcasts over the next week or two, um, which is something you wouldn't have done 24 months ago. And there'll be five to seven other things that none of us know has the attention of the consumer. Maybe an app that comes out on the watch, right? There's so much coming. And so here's what I can tell you. I don't predict, I react, um, but I do know this. In 24 months, there'll be some new stuff. Stuff. I almost said shit and then stuff. Shit and stuff means stuff. That's how it comes out of my mouth. Question of the day. What is a good question of the day? Ah, I'm going to go very football on you. What is your favorite football team? Who do you want your team to take? One of you lucky Baniacs will get an opportunity of me buying a jersey of your favorite team's actual pick if you predict it properly in the comments section of YouTube. That's right. And you know what? And Facebook. So what's your favorite football team and who do you want them to select? If you're right, you may get that person's jersey as a surprise by me. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Hey Chris Rock. (laughs) There is? Yeah, there is. There's a chat. Hey Chris. So cool. Gary B's the man, Chris Rock, Meerkat. You missed the holy shit, Chris. Rock. Gary, Chris, oh wow. Yeah, it's Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs>